Happy New Year. Chúc mừng năm mới. Cung hỷ phát trời. I'm so happy to be here representing Chopsticks Alley and also uh, San Jose Museum of Art on this very exciting project called Hidden Heritages, where today we're going to be sharing with you some Vietnamese poetry. Just a little bit about Vietnamese poetry. It's really in our soul. It's not even something that we can choose. We're like kind of born with it. And even as children, we are taught poetry through lullabies and through just um, little sayings daily. So it's part of our, our soul. And why is that? It's because Vietnam is such a war-torn war country where we're constantly fighting or for our lives or escaping. And so the one thing we could always carry with us is everything that's in our minds, right? And our hearts, and that's poetry. So it's not like carrying a, a pottery or a painting or things like that, that you can easily carry from place to place when you're escaping from war. But poetry is, and poetry is also very romantic. And I don't know um, if people think about Vietnam as a very romantic country, but it is, it truly is. And if you think of like, oh, you know, um, the stereotypes that, oh, in Latin America, the men are sexy, you know. Well, in Vietnam, we consider our men pretty <laughs> sexy, right? And that's because they're in their soul. It's, they speak and spew just poetry all day long. So let me share with you a little bit about um, Hidden Heritages. So what Hidden Heritages is a two-year partnership between the San Jose Museum of Art and Shop Six Alley and the City of San Jose's Office of Cultural Affairs that brings Vietnamese artists and community members together to share, amplify, and artistically present stories that reveal the contributions of Vietnamese Americans to San Jose. Hidden Heritages is, um, I'm gonna say in Vietnamese, just in case we have a few folks who are Vietnamese out, out of respect, and then the rest of the program will be in English, okay? Um, San Jose Vietnamese Legacy ẩn dấu di sản Việt tại San Jose là dự án hợp tác trong vòng hai năm giữa San Jose Museum of Art, Chopsticks Alley và City of San Jose's Office of Cultural Affairs để hội tụ các nghệ sĩ Việt Nam với những thành viên trong cộng đồng lại gần với nhau nhằm mục đích chia sẻ, công bố rộng rãi và trình bày một cách nghệ thuật những câu chuyện để làm sáng tỏ các đóng góp của người Mỹ gốc Việt tại San Jose một trong ngự những thành phố đa dạng nhất của California. So we would love for you uh, to hear from you. So follow us uh, on Hidden Heritage in social media, but also um, San Jose Museum of Art has a beautiful um, page link so you can see the final exhibit once we're done. So the agenda for today, um, to begin our class, I'd like to introduce to you uh, a young poet on boy who will be uh, running the show. But actually before that, let me introduce our um, oldest poet <laughs> that I know. Um, and he's here with us today. And that is um, poet Jin Nguyen. So mời chú, nếu mà chú muốn nói vài lời. Yeah, thank you for Jami. I really enjoy the group because uh, I love it talking with a young guy um, I love it talking about his um, poetry and thank you Johnny and thank you everybody Come you right now so um, he you know you understand and I, we really uh, love that you joined us today and if everyone can believe it Mr. Jin a poet Jin is over 80 years old so the fact that he's on zoom that says that we can all be on zoom right no more excuses <laughs> So um, we are, this, this workshop was actually created by Chu Jin or Poet Jin. And we have Poet An Boy, who's the younger Vietnamese generation, who is going to be helping uh, run the, the workshop for us. So An, if you want to say hello to our audience. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is An, and Chuk Mang Nam Mai. Happy Lunar New Year. I'm so excited and honored to be leading this workshop that Jin <coughs> created um, and adapting it to English for you all. And just enjoying this morning, the second day of the new year with everyone today. So I can't wait to teach you and I can't wait to see your poems later. 
Yes, and I like to point out that we are both wearing Alzai, and you know, Oshkar, our um, a state assembly member, he was wearing one too. And they're they come in different forms, different necks, <laughs> different you know sleeves. So <laughs> An is wearing a boat neck one, and that was inspired by in the 1960s by the um, at the time the president's I guess the first lady of Vietnam, right? When she took on the Western style of um, Alzai, and I have more of the tradition traditional neckline. But actually, you know, the dress itself is not that traditional because it's kind of see-through and that's like not <laughs> tradition, right? Yep. It's a no -no. But today, <laughs> this is America, it's 2021, so we have to, you know, take it up a notch. So without further ado, let me introduce Ang more um, formally. So Ang is going to be reading a poem for us called New Year Wishes for My Little Brother. An Boy is a poet and youth worker who was born in Vietnam and raised in San Jose. So she's fluent in Vietnamese, and that's just amazing to us. She earned a BA at UCLA and served in the Jesuit Cor Volunteer Corps. Through her writing, she navigates family dynamics, queer Catholic Vietnamese identity, and grief. Really tough job. She has facilitated poetry reading, uh, writing workshops, and emceed open mics for retreats and community events throughout the Bay Area. So um, after the workshop ends, remember to stick around because between noon and 1230, we have an open mic. So she is a member of the Artists and Healer Collective called QT Viet Cafe Collective Circle. Her work has been featured in Auto Traddle, Kearney Street Workshop and more. When she's not writing, she's leading programs to support youth development dreaming of intergenerational healing with families and catching as many sunsets as possible. So Anne, with that, please take it away. Thank you, Demi, for the introduction. I have a poem for you all. Um, New Year wishes for my little brother. My little ox, the grief of losing you was so strong just one year ago. Now it comes softer, like gentle waves kissing the sands of your memory. Less survivor's guilt comes now, but sometimes the waves still crash down, longing to tell your story more than my own. Remember when you'd stay up with me? We'd catch up for hours after dark in the living room, our eyes barely winning against sleep as we talked about everything in life, from school to work, family to dating, activism to joy. You were determined to figure things out. This reconnection to our culture and family, rediscovery of your spirituality and purpose, revelation of who you are and who you want to be. Young adult male, fresh college grad, teacher in service, aspiring social worker. You didn't know where this path would take you, but you wouldn't hesitate to take the lead. This Lunar New Year, in your fellow oxen, I see the same hard work, dependability, desire to make something of yourselves. To you and your peers, I offer these wishes. May you take it steady and build your foundation. Envision your future harvest with clarity so you know what seeds to plant. Take the time to till the soil and water the seeds. May you remember to keep an eye on them. Watch out for problems because they will arise. Learn how to ask for help and address the root cause. Don't get distracted by the symptoms. May you find comfort in knowing that problems can always be solved and you can always start over. There is plenty of soil, seeds, and time. What matters is that you don't give up and keep on moving. May you learn to celebrate the trials and errors that will strengthen your soil and soul. Before you know it, sprouts will emerge, gracing you with milestones worth embracing. This is just the beginning, my little ox. No matter what happens, your ancestors got you. Even as the most strong and stubborn animal in the zodiac, you need support and rest too. Because of their legacy, the love of those that stand beside you, your own courage and patience in the process, these plants, these dreams turned reality are possible. So remember, this is a year of sowing, not reaping. Spring is coming no matter how cold the winter was. So settle your dreams into place and trust me, you will marvel at all the ways you'll grow. Thank you.
That is so wonderful. Thank you so much. It's such a perfect um, uh, rendition of what an, an ox, the animal, means to us. And also, thank you for sharing uh, such an intimate story with you and your brother. Um, we really appreciate that. And um, such a message of hope, too. And that's just wonderful. Right, everyone? We love it. So we have to give her like virtual claps. I know. Virtual, I hear the virtual claps, everyone. <laughs> you can hear them through your camera screen. <laughs> Definitely feel free to use reactions, you know, hearts, claps, thumbs up. We really appreciate the virtual environment. And if you're on Facebook, I know you can react too on the stream. So definitely feel free to use the chat in all those ways. <laughs> Well, thank you. So without, you know, if you want to write poetry like this too, then you have to kind of learn some basics, right? So today, Ang is going to share with you some basic Vietnamese poetry. So um, we're going to have you take over, Ang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will share my screen right now. Perfect. Okay, everyone, welcome to Kai Gao, Journey, Poetry, and Life. A Vietnamese poetry workshop, again, created by Ju Jin Nguyen and presented by nice. myself, Anne Wood. Yes, Ju Jin, hello. So we're going to get started uh, right in diving into it. So as Jami noticed, poetry, the importance of poetry is huge in Vietnamese culture, from history, culture, family, and a way of life. And as she mentioned, it was really important for Vietnamese folks to have poetry in our daily lives because it is a form of art we can carry with us no matter what war, colonization, and occupation we were going through from other countries. And in addition, it was also a way that people would flirt with each other because they considered it inappropriate to flirt directly. So they felt like it was better if you just recited poems to each other versus being straightforward. So it's really funny and interesting how it just kind of incorporated itself in the way of life. And the other important thing to note is that not only poets are poets in Vietnam, like everyone uses poetry in your everyday life when you're talking about beliefs, you're teaching your children, or even just talking about like how we live our lifestyle. So poetry really is for everyone. And it's so part of our everyday phrases that we don't even realize that we're using poetry. To dive into more history of poetry, I want to highlight some famous poets and poems. And so on the left, there's four famous poets, uh, Lee Thường Kiet, Đại Trần Côn, Nguyễn Du, and Ho Xuân Hương. And what you'll notice actually about these names is that the last name is actually the first name, the last name uh, of our Vietnamese culture is actually the first name when you read it. So Vietnamese names were read from last name to first name, not first name to to last name. So Lee is actually a last name. And these are their famous poems that they are really known for. And the one I really want to highlight is the tale of Jit Gil, which was basically a 3000 plus verse poem about the trials and tribulations of a woman who had to sacrifice so much from her family to save her, to save her father and her brother from prison, even having to sell herself into marriage to do so and what she did to overcome that struggle. So it's a really epic poem. And if you could choose one poem from this list to check out, that is definitely the one that I would recommend. Now we're gonna move into the four different poetry styles. So I'm gonna teach you four different poetry styles that we have. The first on the top left is called That Ngon Bat Gu. Then we have Tu Tuyet on the top right. Then we have Song That Luk Bat on the bottom left. And last but not least, the star of the show is going to be Look Back, which is actually the poetic style that you are going to get the chance to practice writing today. So let's dive. Before we dive into it, though, everyone just type in the comments, like, how is poetry important to you? Like, how has poetry been important to your family, your culture, your way of life, or your history? I'm sure that we'd love to hear, even because we can't be in a room together, but we'd love to hear in the comments, like, how it's been important to you. Um, so that we can draw from that as well. Let me see if I can. I'm not sure if I could pull up the chat at the same time, but yes, I see honoring memories. I love it. Exploring emotions and experiences. Definitely a great use of poetry. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Oh, yeah, I see excitement. Yes, we're so excited to have you. So we're going to dive right in because I want to make sure there's time for you all to practice. And thank you for sharing that poetry allows me to process my feelings. All right, 
moving forward. Uh, okay. So the first form is called Tatngon Batku. And this is an example of a poem. And what is distinct about this poetry style is that it is eight sentences, seven words each, because in Vietnamese, every word is just one syllable. So if you actually translate it to English, it would be more so seven syllables each. But in Vietnamese, because all our words are just one syllable, it's seven words. And so you'll notice here that's in the bold, the last word of each line is what rhymes with each other. So I'll just read it aloud so you all can hear it, and then I'll explain what the poem is about. So it goes like this. Bài hàng viên, anh vi trần nhu, đang buồn tin báo, bác trần nhu, đá vội quy, lông cánh bỗng xù, vẫn biết luật đời, sinh có tử, sớm tìm đạo pháp học và tu, viết ngàn trang, tố phường gian ác, Thường mấy người xa cảnh ngục tù, quỷ dữ, gieo nhân thì thái quả, cáo, cầy, kiếp kiếp, lũ hèn ngu. You can see the, you can hear how it rhymes the last words, right? Nhu, su, tử, tu, ác, tù, quả, ngu. So it has that pattern to it. And this is actually a poem, it's actually a very sad poem about receiving news about someone that has passed away and remembering their own personal time when they were a prisoner of war um, in the re-education camps in Vietnam. So that's what this poem is about. And again, showing the different uh, aspects of life that poetry is about. So again, just to recap, eight sentences, seven words each, and the last word is what rhymes. The next poem style that we're going to review is Tư Tuyệt. So Tư Tuyệt is characterized by actually four sentences and still seven words each with the last word having a pattern with each other. I will read this poem for you all. And it goes like this. Phuong đỏ, mùa sư chẳng đợi nhau, màu hồng tựa máu rỉ tim đau, nhỏ trên mặt nước rung rinh sóng, loan tận biển đông, đấy vực sâu, so nhau đau. Sống sau, that's the pattern. And this is another sad poem. Um, and it is actually about those who crossed the ocean and passed away. And what that experience was like, because you know, a lot of Vietnamese refugees had to cross the ocean to try and escape the political conflict in Vietnam at the time. And so this was a poem about that struggle as well. Yeah. The next poetry style that we have for you all is called Song Thất Lục Bát. And this is similar to our final star poetry because poem style, because you see here Lục Bát in the title. Um, and this poetry style, if you may notice, is actually characterized by a more unique style than the others, where there are two sentences, seven words each, and then there's one sentence, six words, and then the last sentence is eight words long. So it's seven words, six words, and then eight words. And the poem goes like this. Tình đã dứt thì thôi người nghe, chúc người luôn vui vẻ tròn đôi. Từ nay khác biệt phương trời, đêm đêm cô lẽ trang rơi bẻ bàng. And this poem is actually a love lost poem and it's about a speaker. It's about a speaker who is wishing their old love all the best and feeling a little lost whenever they gaze at the, at the moon. And Agnes, I see your question, why all these sad poems for Lunar New Year? And you are pointing out a great point. And I think because so much of poetry, right, as someone mentioned earlier, is expressing our uh, our emotions and our experiences and because Vietnamese people are so expressive people we have so many poems about the sad things in our life and that's how we bring them to the light and talk about it rather than burying it you know burying it in our subconscious so I think because of all the struggle we have been through but also the ways we overcome it it has shown up in our art so those are why those are the examples here I know there are probably there are definitely a ton more of happy poems as well but you just can't help but feel the juiciness, you know, of those like sad and heartbreaking songs that really touch, or poems that really touch to the human soul. But I do appreciate you pointing that out because we do have more happy poems. And last 
Yes, definitely. And as Din Mai noted too, like the end of the war was marked in 1975, which is not that long ago, even though now in 2020, it feels like 50 years ago, but the wounds and the healing is very much still present. So without further ado, look back is our final poetry style that I will be teaching you today. And look back is actually also known as Southam, which means six, eight, because it's characterized by one sentence that's six words, the, se the second sentence that's eight words, and then it repeats six, eight, six, eight. And for look back, there actually is no limit to how many verses you can have. Um, it can just go endlessly. And the rhyme pattern, I put it here because we're gonna learn how to write it. So basically the last word, the sixth word of the, the sixth word will rhyme with each other in the first two lines. And then the last word of the second line is gonna rhyme with the last word of the following line. So I'll read the poem for you. And the translation is right there too, although it's transliterated. So the rhyme pattern doesn't carry over, but here's the poem. Đường xa thì thật là xa, mượn mình là mối cho ta, một người, một người mới tám, đôi mươi, một người vừa vừa tươi như mình. So if you notice in that poem, the words that rhyme is xa and ta from the first and second. And then from the second and third, we have mười and mười. And then from the third to the fourth, we have mười and tươi or mui and thui. So there's some slant rhymes in there too. You'll notice, right? Because they're not like exact <laughs> rhymes, but they are slant rhymes. Oh, thank you, Tutin. <laughs> yeah, and as you can see in the translation, it's a, it's a love poem. So this is the happy love poem where the speaker is saying, the long road is really long. I ask you to find me a match, one who is 18 or 20, one who has, is as pretty and cheerful as you. So a young lover, asking to also be set up with another lover, which is perfect for New Year and perfect for romance as well. Yeah, cool. So we are gonna keep going into more examples of look back. So and one of the most common ways you'll see look back show up in Vietnamese poetry is in ga yao. And ga yao are proverbs and they are songs passed down by words of mouth and activities of the people. Oops, sorry y'all for my screen. Um, and what they, and what the word gayao means is literally song and, sorry, it's literally means short songs and unfixed melody. So ga means song and yao means short unfixed melody. And when it's talking about like the village life and everything that's happening in the village, there's kind of like a, another label that calls it phong yao. And when it's talking about like children and raising children, there's a subcategory called Dong Yao. So that is the, the contents of Gai Yao. And the content is really rich, like way back, it's super traditional. It just tells about our philosophy. So a lot of times it's how you raised your family to understand your customs and beliefs in and talking about activities for children, as Jamie mentioned in the beginning, lullabies as well. And for generations, it was actually historically sung, um, which is also what that um, old art UNESCO, the historic UNESCO art form um, that Ratika was mentioning from the beginning. But over the years, less people have acquired or practiced that sing song skill for our poetry. So nowadays, more people will actually just speak it or read it aloud, similar to how I read it for you all today. And so with the Gayao, we're actually going to list it or here's another example of some gai yaos. So I will read the I'll read them for you and then explain what they can mean. So ta ve ta tam ao ta zu chong zu duk ao nhà vẫn hơn. That's the one on the top left. We return to bathe in our pond. Clear or murky, our pond is still better. And the meaning of that gai yao and that proverb is basically meaning that there is no better place than home or your own place even though your old place may not be as clean as someone else's place. So it's that tenderness of the familiarity of your own space. And the one on the bottom right, I will read, and it goes like this. Một cây làm trạng nên non, non, ba cây chụp lại nên hôn núi cao. One tree can't make a mountain, three trees together form a high mountain. 
And what that gagao means is that alone, you cannot do as much, but together mm. you can achieve so much more and you're so much stronger together. And so that really speaks to the collectivist culture of Vietnamese culture, where we are so focused on the community and recognizing that we are here and our life has value, not just for ourselves, but also to be part of this community together, which is such a beautiful aspect of Vietnamese culture that you definitely see in the poetry. Yeah. Do, uh, put in the comments below as you read these proverbs and ca yao, like which one is your favorite? Are you really loving the pond one? The loving the one about the person leaving and the toothy smile, about the deep river or about the trees? I'd love to know which of these four Kayao poems like you feel like you really are enjoying today. Nice, yeah, seeing the pond one, getting a lot of popularity. Yep, the strength of togetherness is a great one as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I love, I'm seeing excitement from you all about getting excited to try this style. Um, and definitely the reflection about why so much of our art reflects our pain and the darkness and the desire to pull that out. Thank you all for those amazing, amazing reflections and sharing. Keep on feeling free to share in the chat. We're gonna move on now to hear some uh, sing-song examples of these gag yao. So I'm gonna go to this side and this poem before I play it is called Le Buk Sang Ngang, which translates to A Girl's Anxiety Before Marriage by poet Nguyen, Nguyen Bin. And I'm only gonna play a minute of this poem because it's quite long. Um, but basically, before you hear it, she is singing. So traditionally in Vietnamese culture, when a woman gets married to a man, she joins his family and she then is responsible for taking care of his family and can't really have as much obligation to take care of her own. So this is about a girl who she loves her mom so much and her mom is aging and she's just worrying because she knows when she gets married she's not going to be able to prioritize taking her mom, care of her mom because she has to take care of her husband's family. So I'm going to play it for you all so you can hear it. Uh, here we go. Em ơi, em ở lại nhà Vườn dâu em đôn mẹ già Em thương Mẹ già một nắng hai sương Chỉ đi một bước trong đường xót xa Cậy em, em ở lại nhà Vườn dâu em Awesome. So that was that poem. You can hear even in the, the music and the strings, the, yes, Radhika, like the sorrow and the haunting and just like all those anxieties of a girl knowing she cannot be fully present to her aging mother once she gets married. And also insight into Vietnamese culture as well and the gender expectations of different people when they get married. Okay, and now we actually have a special live performance um, by poet Din Nguyen, and this is another way that Gayao shows up, which is in the lullaby, which in Vietnamese is called by Hat Ru Con. So, Chú Chín, cháu mời chú để trình diễn bài Hat Ru Con. I'm inviting him to the stage now to perform his live uh, lullaby. Okay, thank you, everybody. I try the best to do it, uh, the kind of uh, sing, yeah, for my mom, I sing for uh, her kids living, okay? So now I can try the best to do. Then em rót mặt vào thơ lòng cung trầm tưởng ngỡ hoang mơ vì à tình thi nhân chữ nghĩa lung linh 
giọng ngâm giường đã tấp tành nấu à nay tiếng tư réo rắt đông đầy kiếp sau vẫn nhớ những ngày đã yêu à ơi à ơi thank you for your here <laughs> yes everyone give heart reactions thumbs up to two ten please yeah what else everyone yeah is that is that a one is uh uh mm, the beautiful tree from the member of the Vien Vietnamese agriculture in the San Jose. She wrote it, so I, I try to bet I did a sick, sick A, right? You know, really, you know, sick A uh, poetry. So Thank you very much, Ju Jin. I would like to share with the audience a little bit about um, poet Jin's background. His um, pseudonym is, his name is actually Han Wing Jung. Um, so Jin Wing is his pseudonym. He served in the South Vietnam Air Force and came to the United States as a communist refugee in 1975. He ended up working at IBM as a test engineer for over 20 years and has of course retired. And he is currently the chairman for Vang Thơ Lạc Việt, which is a Vietnamese and poetry and literary organization in San Jose. And he also hosts his own talk show um, on various Vietnamese TV and of course YouTube. And what you're hearing, um, the song there is quite incredible because I grew up with my grandmother singing these songs to me. And you, you're hearing a type of rhythm that from all these things that, you know, An played the video and now when poet didn't perform, these are all different rhythm of um, reciting poetry. You're gonna hear other rhythms too. And with each type of poetry you recite it within a particular rhythm. And these rhythms are is what's recognized by UNESCO as part of the um, Vietnamese heritage. Thank you. Back to you, An. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dami, for sharing that context and about Chu Jin's background. And thank you again, Kaman Chu Jin Mio, that you say, by Hatrupan. It's such a treat to be able to hear a live lullaby uh, from an elder, especially that we cherish in the community. So we already had a lullaby. Oops, sorry. We're gonna skip this video because we had a live performance from the lullaby. And the last song example I wanna show you all is called Hat Yao Zuyin, which translates to singing love songs back and forth. This is by the Bac Ninh folk performers and Bac Ninh is a neighborhood actually in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, they have like a lot of neighborhood pride, similar to how we have neighborhood pride in San Jose. So actually on that note, why don't you drop what neighborhood you're from in San Jose and that you're repping today so we can see how we're all coming together to celebrate the Lunar New Year, whether you're representing like East San Jose or Evergreen or West San Jose or Blossom Valley or, you know, I know I'm still learning all the different names, even though I've lived here all my most of my life. But yeah, I see it. Okay, Cambrian, Willow Glen, East Bay, cool. Nagley Park, someone coming in from Oregon. I love it. I love it. Thank you all for representing your neighborhood in San Jose. It's so Santa Cruz, awesome. And in Santa Clara County and the South Bay, that is so cool. Thank you all for sharing. Okay, now I'm gonna share a snippet of this video so you can see what that courtship looked like uh, because people considered it too much to straightforwardly flirt. So here we go.
Okay, I'll pause it there. But as you can see, they don't like talk at the same time. One side has to share all their verses first and how they want to court the other side. And then the other side gets to go and respond and they go back and forth. And you'll notice both of them are also wear wearing traditional clothes as well. So it's just a really cool way. I feel like it's more, rom it's very romantic and it's very intentional, right? You can't just come out of nowhere with your cheesy pickup line. Like you gotta come up with a poem if you wanna court someone today in Vietnam. <laughs> so it just shows that intention behind it as well. Now, without further ado, it is your turn to get writing and to start practice. So I hope now's a chance if you haven't already to grab your piece of paper and your writing utensil. And what I have is I actually have three different prompts for you all to um, write the poem. And we're gonna give everyone actually 10 minutes to write. So we'll come back at 11.45 so that we can get here, you all share some poems. And of course, we know we're not looking for perfectionism here. We're just looking for you to tap into your story, tap into what you are really feeling like sharing your voice about today in regards to these prompts. Um, and this is a safe space to share. So we're not here to judge and we're just here to support each other and celebrate the new year. So the three prompts that you could possibly use is one, write a ga yao about your family's activities, habits, beliefs, or way of life. And as you remember, a gayao is a proverb and the rhyme pattern is six, eight. So one sentence with six syllables, second sentence with eight syllables. And make sure that this, and I'll have a rhyme pattern for you down here where you have the six word rhyme and then you have the eighth and six word rhyme. So my rhyme is little brother, I wish for you to swim and fish for life, catch it all except strife, sing to the beat of fifes and drums. So you're gonna follow by syllables since English words are more than one syllable. Another uh, poetry prompt for you all is write a look bat poem about a new year's wish you have for someone in your family. So look bat poem again, six, eight, and it's very traditional in our new years to give new year's wishes to folks. So that's where I had that poem. And then the final poem prompt for you all is to write a look bat poem about your favorite hidden gem in San Jose because Hidden Heritages is also about celebrating the Vietnamese American contribution and in general, our contributions to San Jose. So I would love to hear too, what's a cool poem to, that you could share to someone who maybe your poem is the first time they're learning about San Jose or your family and what would you wanna share? And as a reminder about the first prompt, which is the Gai Yao poem, Gai Yao's are typically only two sentences. So it's just one six and then one eight. So you can write like several different gayals, or you can write like a longer form poem in a look back style, it's up to you. But for now, I will give you all 10 minutes to write and play some background music. So we'll check back in at 11.45 a.m. with your poem. So let me play some music now for you all. Let me just play. This. Thank you so much, Anne, for uh, oh. leading with our audience to this. It's <laughs> and I think to yeah. make it easier, because I'm like not a poet, uh, yeah. maybe be easy just to start with two lines. So the first line is six syllables. The second line is eight syllables and make sure that the rhyming, how she taught you, um, I think we start there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so. so while Anne um, gets her music ready, I just wanted to um, share with you like how amazing it is for us to be able to share our poetry. And we really appreciate the San Jose Museum of Art for giving us some airtime during Community Day. And if you ever had a chance to go to Community Day in live, um, you know, last year, it was just so amazing. It's just a tradition that we love uh, that SJMA is doing for the community and seeing everyone's faces and wearing their best outfits. And of course, lots of selfies. It's always super fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Demi, for sure. I missed that. All right, y'all, let's get to writing with our pen. I'll play some background music.
have about one more minute, everyone. So let's take the time to wrap up your Kayao and look back home before we bring us back. Put those final words to the paper. moment so i am going to slowly bring us back definitely add that last rhyme that you were thinking about for um, your poem and gayao and that's okay it's okay if you didn't make it rhyme it takes practice but what's most important to um, outside of the poetry style is really the story and the message of the poems and how they're tapping into your experiences your family's experiences or your wishes for others so actually now in our next um five or five to ten minutes we want to give a space for people to share their poems with everyone in the group and to unmute yourself so please we would love to hear your poems again this is a safe space a no judgment zone and just not expecting perfection at all although i'm sure you all have written some really beautiful poems about your your family and your life so uh, yeah please let me know um, and feel free to just unmute yourself if you're able to so we can hear your poem or your kaya. Um, I'd like to share. This is Renee Shell. Yes, Renee, please go ahead. I'll go ahead and put my video on. It's so great to see you. Oh, thank you. I'm a second grade teacher in San Jose and I have um, a lot of Vietnamese students. So that's why I tuned in today and I'm a poet, I love poetry. So here's my poem. Uh, it's about a hidden gem in San Jose called Oak Grove Park. Woodpeckers, Oak Grove Park, not a robin, lark, or crane, but your heartfelt pain falls like leaves, like rain. Thank you. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much, Renee. Let's give Renee our hearts, our reactions, our affirmation. It definitely takes courage to share on a virtual event. And I love Asela that you wanted to go next. Please feel free. The mic is yours. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for this event. And um, I just realized I wrote a, a look back. I hope I pronounced that right. Look Perfect. Back. Awesome. So I realized that and still refined, but OK. To my mother, I hope. You'll venture to your home again. Speak yourself how you want. Walk to your dreams to Tokyo. Dry your tears from your pain. And feel safe to say, I am back. Thank you. Beautiful. I love that homecoming poem and wish to your mother. That is so sweet and tender. I love it. And so everyone knows Asela is a poet. Um, and she has worked with Chopsticks Alley before. She's like amazing. So to have you here is a great honor for us. So thanks for showing up. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Would anyone else like to share? Let me go to the chat in case someone else put it on there. They want to share. You can feel free to unmute. Oh, and I also see people Ooh. writing in the chat box some of their poems. Oh, Jujin, did you say something? No. <laughs> okay, okay. Just checking. I did, I did. I might, uh, just poetry when I'm sick, I... <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I can read that for you, look at. Yeah, sure, good turn. You want to share one quê hương, poem? Quê hương xa thẳm muôn trùng Ước mong mai mốt trùng phùng với em Wow, so should wow. I translate? Yes, um, please. So literally, it's um, um, my country is so far, far away and I hope to be reunited, you loved one. 
soon. So it's a love poem. Who are you missing? Poet? <laughs> <laughs> Fashion time. Who's it's like our, it's, it's our example poem. I think about it when I'm 18 years old. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So your, and, your love when you were 18. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anne, would you it. like to read um, the poem that Saul posted on the chat? Yes, I will read that um, for you all. To my lovely wife, where would my life be without you? You are the breath of fresh air, driving the blues away with your smile. Your fragrance can be felt for miles. I thank the Lord for you being in our life. Such a sweet poem. Thank you so much for sharing. So, so much love in this room. Yes. So much love. Um, definitely feel free to continue sharing in the chat. Would anyone else like to share uh, unmuted for the whole group? Um, if you want on while we're waiting for the next one, I can read a couple of Vietnamese proverbs. With that oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So this one is, um, so on chopsticksalley.com, we have a bunch of guy yao that we posted. Um, I'm trying to find a positive one. I guess we're very bitter people. I don't know. <laughs> So this one's about, um, it's called Mèo Kheng Mèo Yai Dui. It's a, it's a quick proverb, so it's only one sentence. It, it means um, the cat is saying how long my tail is. So it speaks to, a, you know, being self-centered, right? So a cat, like, bragging how long his tail is. Um, I love Vietnamese proverbs and these sayings because it's just like a way of um, criticizing without being in your face, right? It's very subtle. Really, it's talking about a cat. What's the big deal, right? But there's this deeper meaning. <laughs> yeah. I have, I noticed one more poem in the chat that I wanted to share from Agnes. And it goes, far away you may be, in both cups we drink tea from home. Hmm. Thank you for that short and sweet and very tender poem about that. I really like that one. That's very sweet. Oh, Jin Mai would like to share. Yes, Jin Mai, the mic is all yours. I, this was so difficult <laughs> to be limited to such a short, uh, yeah, um, amount of words or I went, I did the syllables. Um, wounds of generations, throughout our lands and our nations, weeping soil of mother, seeping in the toil of brother, we carry together, heavy stone as light as feather. I lift a prayer of peace to sift through mire and trees. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim Mai. For everyone, um, Tim Mai is one of our main artists in the Hidden Heritages Project. And she has um, created a, a few workshops for us in, in the culminating of the final uh, exhibit. She and um, artist Bindan will be a huge part of that. And they're working on that together. Thank you for being here today. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that deep poem. And I like how you said that this was challenging. And then you just like whipped out this amazing, beautiful deep poem about <laughs> our, his, our, our like our experience and our struggle. So thank you for that. And I loved it. Well, we have time for one more sharing, whether that is in the chat or live. So I want to pass the mic to anyone who would like to do that before we close out our workshop and transition into the open mic later today. I have another proverb to share while we wait. Um, this one's a little longer and it's, it goes like this. Ở sao vừa được lòng người, ở rộng người cười, ở hẹp người chê. So the direct translation is, how can we please everyone? Live lavishly and they will laugh. Live frugally and they will condemn. So another statement about society, right? You can't please everyone. But I, I just love the rhythm and the up and down. The, uh, it's very musical, right? That's the Vietnamese language is very musical. It's like built in um, rhythm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, oh, Gemma. Can share. Yeah, I can share. Oh, yeah. Roll it. I would love to hear from you. Hello, how is everyone? So I was very inspired by your poem about your brother. Um, mm. I have a younger sibling as well. So I'll, I'll share my small poem. V, my younger sibling, I hope for you to sing with pride. Your new voice, a new fire. Oh, live life and never tire. Mm. Good. 
Mm. I love it. I can feel the love for your sibling in that poem for sure. Thank you, Rod. And thank you everyone so much for writing with us and sharing your poem, your Kayao or look back poem today, whether it was through the chat or through uh, the mic live. And we just want to give you all some contact information to stay in touch with us, whether you want to keep in touch with me, Poet Jin Nguyen, Chopsticks Ali Art, or San Jose Museum of Art. These are the different ways you can contact us. And yes, definitely echoing Jin Mai, where Du Jin is the true poet. He is the original creator of this entire workshop, and I just adapted it into English for you all. So let's definitely give him our love and round of applause for keeping Thank Vietnamese you. culture and poetry alive here in the diaspora. Thank yeah. you so much, Ang, for doing such a great job. We really appreciate you um, joining us today and, and creating and translating it and, and modernizing it.